Hi y'all, welcome to Petite Weaver Crafts. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a big old drawstring project bag. Um, so the way I made this pattern is to work with six fat quarters. Um, if you're not familiar with quilting or sewing, um, a fat quarter is a pre-cut piece of fabric that is cut to 22 inches wide by 18 inches tall. Um, and I will be working with three coordinating fabric. The ones I have here, is this cute eat it all fabric um, which will be my lining this adorable ice cream cone fabric which will be the main fabric for my project bag and then the sprinkles will be the contrasting fabric so the lining doesn't have to be trimmed down at all we need it at 22 inches by 18 inches so now we have to cut out our lining fabric to 22 inches wide by 6 inches tall and it's always a good idea to cut away from you and here I am using a Fiskars cutting mat and a rotary cutter um, safety first make sure you always close the blade when you're not using it so open it to use and then close it immediately after before you put it down And for the main fabric, we want it to be 12 inches wide. Up next, we'll be trimming some fusible fleece interfacing. Um, I like to add this interfacing to give a little bit more structure to the project bag, um, since it is such a large bag. We need to trim this down to 22 inches wide by 18 inches, or sorry, by 12 inches tall. Alrighty, up next we will be fusing the main fabric to the interfacing. So what you want to do is place the interfacing texture side up, which is where the adhesive is, and then lay your main fabric right side down on top. Line up all the corners, and then follow the instructions on your interfacing on how to activate the adhesive. In my case, I will be using a iron and a spray bottle filled with water. And work from the center outward and press very firmly. Uh, repeat the same for the other side, which I've already done. Alrighty, now we're ready to sew. Okay, so up next, we'll be taking our main fabric that's been fused with the interfacing, right side up. And then we'll take a piece of our contrast fabric and place them right sides together. If your contrast fabric is directional, you want to place it upside down. So we'll line up the corners and pen, and here I'm using clips, but you can also use straight pins. Okay. 
and we'll be using a basic straight stitch. I have mine set at a length of three. Okay. And all seams are sewn at a quarter inch distance from the edge. Next, open up the fabric and kind of smooth it down with your fingers. We will be sewing the contrast fabric onto the edge of the interfacing. This is going to be called a top stitch where we sew right along where the seam is on the contrast fabric. Can you see where the stitching is? All this does is it helps the contrasting fabric lay a lot flatter against the thicker interface fabric. And then you repeat for the other side. Alrighty, up next we'll take a piece of the lining fabric, right side facing in, and you want to keep it right side up. Line and pin it up with the contrast fabric. And then sew along this top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Open the fabric up, and with the sewn edge facing the lining fabric, you're going to do another top stitch, this time on the lining fabric. So let me just show you that again. So you have the contrast fabric and the lining fabric. You want the seam, seam edge to face the lining fabric. And we're going to sew right alongside the lining fabric to pin the contrast fabric down. It's a little bit hard to see on this fabric, but you can see that I stitched that line right up next to the seam. And that once again just allows the seam to sit a little bit flatter. And then repeat for the other side. Next we want to pin the two layers together. Right sides facing in. You want to line up all the corners and seams. Okay, now that we've pinned all the way around the edge, um, lining up seams when we get to them, and corners, 
we will be sewing around the edge. This is the bottom of the lining and we're actually going to start about a third of the way in, go all the way around and then stop a third of the way in on the other corner. That way we'll leave a about a six inch gap in the middle of the bottom of the lining. Alrighty, so through the gap that you left, what we're going to do is box the corners so that when the bag is open, it'll sit flat. Um, in order to box the corners, what we're going to do is we're going to mark a four inch square on the corner. Using a washable disappearing ink pen and a ruler. I mark four inches up from the bottom edge in two different places. Right. And then do the same from the side. And the reason I do two places is so that you can line up those lines before you draw the cross line. And repeat for all four corners. Alrighty, next, reaching through the gap that you left. We are going to align the blue line that we have drawn on both sides. I like using a straight pin and, and pin the line from one side to the other, making sure that the center seam lines up. And that's how you get that perfect matched up corners at the bottom of your bag. And then repeat for all four corners. You can use the the line that you've drawn previously as a guide and draw a line straight across as a guide for sewing. And boxing the corner is probably the trickiest part of this bag. Now that we have our lines drawn, we are going to sew right along it, removing pins as we go.
All right, now we can trim off this excess fabric. Using a pair of sharp scissors, trim off the fabric to about a quarter of an inch above the seam. Just like that. Now repeat for the other side by reaching through the same gap in the fabric. And see the squares that you drew are now the corners that you cut off. So now we'll turn the bag inside out through the gap. Make sure you poke out all the little corners so they're nice and sharp. And see, since I lined up the edges as I was sewing, uh, before I sewed them, it makes a nice and perfect intersection. Mine don't always turn out this great, <laughs> honestly, but no one's gonna care. And then take the corners of your lining and kind of line it up with the corners of your bag. Alrighty, next we're going to sew the channel for the drawstring. I like to sew from looking at the inside of the bag. We're going to sew the first line three quarters of an inch from the top. And then we'll sew the next line three quarters of an inch from the first one. Alrighty, now you have the channel sewn. Using a seam ripper, we're going to cut open the space between the two rows to insert the drawstring. Repeat for the other side. Next, we're going to insert our drawstring. Here I am using a quarter inch cotton cord. You can also use um, half inch twill tape. So taking a safety pin, thread or pin through your cord, and we're gonna use this to thread through the channel. Slide it into the channel and using the firmness of the safety pin, slide your cord into the drawstring channel that you've made. Okay, that's through one side. <clears throat> now loop back all the way to the beginning again.
All right, once you've gotten the cord back to the beginning, unpin it from the safety pin and knot both ends together. <laughs> All right, now repeat that same procedure starting from the other side. So here we have the knot, so we're gonna flip the bag over and repeat the process. Alrighty, the final step is to close up the bottom gap that we left in the lining. First we want to pin the seam with the raw edges facing inside. And then we're gonna sew as close to the edge as we possibly can. Cut off any loose threads and then turn the right side back in. And that's it, finished product.